Yo everybody, what's going on? This is Keegan from K-Man Reviews. If you enjoyed this review, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe button. And if you have any opinions at all that you would like to share, make sure to leave them down in the comment section. Delete Zeke, Teen Week. Delete Zeke, singer, songwriter, producer, and at this point, a well-heralded artist in this digicore scene. However, this isn't the critically acclaimed Delete Zeke, at least not yet, because that wouldn't truly start until Frailty, their debut album. Instead, thanks to a viewer suggestion, I get to cover this EP. I'm pretty sure it's technically an EP, because most places I've seen list Frailty as the debut album, but in some places it's also listed as an album. I, I don't really know, but I'm calling it an EP. The debut EP, Teen Week. I've seen Delete Zeke in my YouTube recommended quite a bit recently, especially after reviewing a fair share of Blade's discography and proliferating my music taste around to similar artists of that scene, but I've never actually listened to their music before, so this debut project seemed like a fitting first exposure. So let's not waste any more time, let's just dive in. What are my thoughts on Teen Week? Let's find out as I review it track by track. We will start with the singles, with there being two of them. The first being Woodside Garden, 16 December 2012, being a first fun taste of this artist. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda expected this to be more rooted in the cloud rap, trap scene, much like Blade, but there's a lot of pop semblances here and on the EP in general. Starting off with this murky synthetic buildup, painting this bouncy, jubilant synth melody, springy bass as well. One thing that I definitely can compare to Blade here though is how Delete Zeke has altered their voice. While they may not be a carbon copy of Blade's effects, the higher pitchiness and robotic tinges has really grown on me thanks to my exposure to Blade, and it really plays well here too. I also love the hyperpop-esque closing moment here, just blasting from all corners and synths everywhere, raging hi-hats. It's an enjoyable song. And the second and final single, 52 Blue Mondays, kicks off with some swampy, repetitious vocal melody, a very appealing and magnetizing way to start a song that gradually builds up more and more, almost to the point of too much, but when it finally drops, it introduces this staticky vocal effort, drum and bass reminiscent hi-hat, frenetic synth zipping, and the occasional sniff in the mix. After the chaos, this infectious bass makes its way in, turning the song into more of a groove than I would have ever expected. It returns to that same stop and go formula that builds again with shrieking cries of synths that border on suffocating, but still manage to feel relatively comfortable. And ending the track on this nuclear bomb of reverberated bass and scratchy synths. The vocal work here retains the same higher pitched timbre I mentioned on the first single, as these lyrics paint a bit of a bleaker picture than what's shown at face value. About not being wanted, no one messages them, full of immeasurable loneliness. Despite that, it's a fun song. Now for the rest of the tracks. Opener Letdown, which starts the EP off on some auto-tune, perpetually rising vocal melodies, slowly beginning to add more and more voices into this pile, and starting to lose the initial melody in the process as the track drops with a plunky, deeper synth track, while Delete Zeke's vocals are just lathered in that same pitch style. It doesn't take too long for that intro melody to return, hanging in the background as this bass comes in, not really creating a banger of a beat, but it has an energetic trot, that is, until the final minute of the song when it all comes to a peak. The synths are forced so far forward, creating this crunchy, distorted vibe, all ending on some brief, sporadic glitchiness. Very engaging opener, kinda wish it had a bit more energy, but the song as a whole is still good. Home Switcher featuring Camo opens up with some blasted synth that reminds me of like some crunk core or overly polished synth pop from the late 2000s, early 2010s. Not my personal favorite scene, and those synths kind of bring me back to that nostalgia I'd rather forget. Once the vocals come in, yet again lathered in effects, much more robotic and monotone sounding than the opener, letting the synths get a bit more modern and fresh in the process. A welcome change for me at least. That doesn't last long though, as the entire track drops into this glitchy, uncontrolled amalgamation of synths, bass, and choppy vocals. Speaking of vocals, Camo has a much more accessible, cleaner vocal delivery. Minimal effects only seem to be used to aid the vocals, instead of completely envelop or transform them. The track drops one final time, this time much less harsh as it fades out naturally. Lyrically, the song just seems to be about not taking any shit from naysayers, and also hoping karma comes back to bite them in their asses. Pretty solid tune here. Dysphoria is a tried and true glitchy synthetic banger, and it all revolves around that stamping drum and bass. Sure, it does become more than like a traditional trap beat right at the end of the song, which also goes pretty hard, but the punchiness of the compressed stampeding production and the rapid fire synths on the first drop should not be ignored. I also like when the vocals undergo the same higher pitched effect for the melodious breakdown. It's a nice brief genre switch up and doesn't feel forced at all. Lyrically, the track is pretty pessimistic, believing they'll end up on the streets knowing they can't talk to people people because they won't understand, but beyond the gloomy lyrics, it's a catchy bop of a tune and one of my favorites here. 
Cartridge is a fairly mellow song to balance out the sheer amount of bangers here, and it's an alright changeup. The serene, calming taps of the synths paired with a gentle vocal delivery. There's also some looming, constantly quaking ambience, plus the occasional yet infrequent bass ripple across the song. Aside from that, this track doesn't really do anything else. It's easily the most stagnant song on the EP, and as a result of that, it falls pretty heavily by the wayside, comparatively speaking. The structure of the song as well, only being one verse, no standout hook or anything like that, it just doesn't really connect with me. If I had to choose a least favorite here, it would be this one. Beast Friend picks up the tempo, and it's another very fun song starting off with some dense bass fueled ambience and playful synths to properly set the mood and smoothly transition into a build up. Revealing this hi-hat and snare seemingly out of nowhere, painting the way for one of the most dynamic and fluid songs in the EP. The song undergoes several tonal and musical changes, dropping explosions and breakdowns to heavily pepper the track. It's the furthest thing from one note and boring. I especially love the quiet plummet to just an ominous phone ringing before halfway, the vibrant climax about two and a half minutes in, and the glitchy, almost horror-fueled closing few seconds. I like the lyrics here too, letting Delete Seek paint these acquaintances in their life as doubters, saying they won't amount to much because they're quiet. Meanwhile, these doubters are just living the typical life and not attempting to make anything happen. Nice song. And finally, the closer 17, which unsurprisingly is a much more chilled out cut. But unlike Cartridge, this one manages to be pretty exciting. It's not as slow as Cartridge at all. Case in point, this gritty, crackly, chugging guitar just continuing to pound for most of the song at varying intensities, sometimes even swallowing the rest of the mix like around 2 minutes 15 seconds in. Eventually that guitar dies out around the final minute, leaving the closing moment of this record to this moody, lower pitch synth ringing that sounds way more creepy than it has any right to be. Pretty solid way to end the song. Overall, I really enjoyed this EP. Delete Zeke's creative, colorful musical palette shines through in a lot of the production here. Melodies are very catchy, a lot of spanning influence here that makes for an eclectic and engaging listen. I can't say I rave about this as much as a lot of people seem to, but if you don't find something to enjoy in this brief sonic roller coaster of an EP, there's gotta be something wrong with you. I'm feeling a 7.5 out of 10 on this EP. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed that review. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.